The pharmaceutical company Sanofi has announced in a press release that their investigational multiple sclerosis drug tolibrutinib was effective at treating secondary progressive MS in a randomized trial. This is not a marketing ploy. This is a federal requirement to announce the results of clinical trials prior to publication to prevent insider trading. They're announcing that in the Hercules trial, a randomized trial of tolibrutinib in non-active secondary progressive MS versus placebo was superior in preventing disability progression. Let's take a look at what we know about tolibrutinib so far. In general, this drug is part of the Bruton's tyrosine kinase class of drugs. There is no BTK inhibitor yet approved for multiple sclerosis. People are very excited about this class of drugs. This is the tyrosine kinase pathway. Tyrosine kinase is a transmembrane protein that adds a phosphorus, hence a kinase, to tyrosine in amino acid of proteins, and it instigates a complicated cascade of downstream cell signaling events. This ultimately leads to proliferation and differentiation of different cells, including white blood cells. This pathway is in many types of white blood cells, not just the lymphocytes like the B cells, but also cells of the innate immune system like microglia and macrophages, the cells of your immune system that you're born with, even though there's very very strong evidence that it's the lymphocytes, the B and T cells that initiate inflammation in MS. There's increasing evidence that in progressive MS, the innate immune system may be driving a slow, subtle inflammation that causes progressive disease. So it's very exciting that this class of drugs is different than B cell depleters like rituximab, ocrevus, briumbi, or casimpta, and may affect these cells and could be more effective for some people. And because it doesn't depl- Complete these cells, it just affects their proliferation and differentiation, it could have a lower risk of infections. It is also in gastrointestinal cells and gastrointestinal side effects have been reported with this class of medications. Interestingly, BTK inhibitors reduce memory B cells thought to be important in the pathogenesis of MS, and they also reduce integrins. These are proteins such as VLA4 involved in homing to the central nervous system, the lymphocytes, allowing them to get into the brain and spinal cord. So blocking them may prevent infiltration of the central nervous system with immune cells, similar to the mechanism of action of Tysabri and Tyruco. This is a specialized PET scan looking at the activity of microglia, again, a component of the innate immune system in a 48-year-old woman with relapse and remitting multiple sclerosis with an expanded disability status scale score of four, indicating moderate disability and disease duration of 12 years. And you can see there's a lot of activity here. She may notice subtle worsening of symptoms over time, even though conventional MRI scans look stable, indicating the importance of these white blood cells. And it's exciting. We may have an agent that targets them, unlike any existing disease-modifying therapy. Here are the results of the phase one tolibrutinib trial. So tolibrutinib is a once-daily pill, and it's an irreversible Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitor. In other words, even though the half-life of the drug in the blood is only two hours, it changes the enzyme permanently inactivating it so that it has a very prolonged biological effect. Also, it gets into the central nervous system very quickly, as I'll show you in a moment. This was a brief study with a small sample size, just a preliminary study, only 16 weeks. It was a randomized double-blind trial, tolibrutinib versus placebo in relapsing or mitigating MS or active secondary progressive MS. So very different from the positive results of the clinical trial in inactive secondary progressive MS that I'm excited about, but nonetheless, these are the preliminary results. This was ages 18 to 55. Of course, we're interested in how effective this drug is in older individuals as well. Here we're looking at new T2 lesions on MRI. On the left is placebo. There were an average of 2.12 new lesions, and most of the doses of tolibrutinib were totally ineffective, but the higher dose, the 60 milligram dose, there were only 0.23 three new lesions on average, and 89% reduction, that's pretty good. In terms of enhancing lesions, lesions that take up the gadolinium contrast dye, it was even better with placebo. It was 1.36 new lesions on average versus 0.29 with the higher 60 milligram dose. That's a 
93% reduction. Again, the lower doses were not effective. And the phase three trials, including the one where the results will be released shortly, they are in fact using the higher 60 milligram dose. But I'll note this is not as effective as some high efficacy agents. A lot of the B cell depleting drugs like Casimpta are even more effective, have a greater than 93% reduction in active lesions. However, like I said, this drug also works on the innate immune system. So even though it's not as strong at suppressing these lesions, it may be superior in other ways and could have potentially fewer serious infectious side effects. This study looked at the levels of tolibutinib in the cerebral spinal fluid assessed via spinal tap two hours after administration of a 120 milligram dose. These lines indicate the free and total levels in the blood, and this single dot indicates that it gets readily into the cerebrospinal fluid and likely into the rest of the central nervous system, which of course is key because some of the inflammation in MS is not happening just in the blood, but also within the brain itself. Now, before I get into the successful phase three progressive MS trial, I should announce very clearly that the trials for relapsing MS were extremely disappointing. So Gemini one and two are two identical trials of tolibutinib versus the drug Abagio in relapse. MS. Abagio is a once a day pill considered to be lower in efficacy, and there was no statistically significant difference based on the press release. In other words, tolibrutinib failed to demonstrate superiority over Abagio, which is bad because people are very unlikely to prescribe a new drug that could potentially cause liver injury when it's not even a little bit better than a, an existing lower efficacy drug. So for relapsing MS, I would say tolibrutinib does doesn't really have much of a role. But the Hercules trial, the randomized trial in secondary progressive MS was reported to be positive. This is a phase three randomized double blind trial over a two year period, a total of 1290 participants, and they tested the higher dose of tolibutinib, 60 milligrams once daily pill versus placebo, one to one randomization, half the people got randomized to placebo, half got tolibutinib, and they had non relapsing secondary progressive MS. So they looked at people with a wide range of disability of EDSS or expanded disability status scale of three, meaning a fairly low amount of disability up to 6.5 using a walker, ages 18 to 60. A lot of prior trials had a cutoff of age 55. So this is a little better. We want to see if these drugs work in older people with progressive MS because multiple sclerosis is not a terminal disease. People can live a long time and they had to have no relapse in the last two years. So if people are having relapses, you can question Question, is the efficacy of the drug simply due to stopping relapses, but these people did not have recent attacks and they did have disability progression in the last year. The primary endpoint, which was reported to be positive, was six month confirmed disability progression. What this means is you have worsening of disability as measured by the EDSS and six months later, you have not recovered. You still have worsening disability from the base Line. This helps to eliminate some fluctuation of disability on a day-to-day -day basis or worsening due to a relapse, which later improves. So this is real and likely fixed disability, though, of course, some people can improve even with progressive MS over periods of years in rare cases. Now, how effective was it? What were the side effects? What were the secondary outcomes? We don't know yet, but all of this will be announced September 20th at Ectrams, a European MS conference, so we'll know very soon. Some of the secondary outcomes include the nine hole peg test, a test of upper extremity function and coordination, the time 25 foot walk, how fast you can walk 25 feet, three month confirmed disability progression, perhaps a less robust measure of disability and MRI outcomes like newer enlarging T2 lesions and tests of cognitive function measured by the symbol digit modalities test and the California verbal learning test. And of course, side effects. What should we consider a clinically meaningful benefit in preventing disability progression for tolibutinib? Well, these are the results of the expand trial. This is a randomized trial of Mazent versus placebo 
placebo in secondary progressive MS. Mazen is also a once a day pill, but a totally different medication in the class of sphingosine 1-phosphate receptor modulators, and it only reduced disability progression by 21%. So I would say if tolibrutinib reduced disability progression by at least 25% and had relatively few side effects, that would be a good start. Though there will be some side effects, this class of medications has been reported to cause gastrointestinal side effects and also low red and white blood cell counts in some cases, also, this clinical trial and others involving tolibrutinib were actually stopped in 2022 due to reports of liver injury, though, of course, they were able to complete this trial. According to the drug company, quote, the majority of the impacted patients were determined to have concurrent complications known historically to predispose to drug-induced liver injury. Importantly, the elevations of laboratory values used for monitoring were reversible after drug discontinuation for all cases. In other words, if you stop the drug, it's expected that the liver injury will resolve, but of course, it's very scary and it may require monitoring. And of course, some people who may be at higher risk shouldn't take the drug at all. Finally, I should mention there's also an ongoing trial, the Perseus trial in primary progressive MS with the same drug. In fact, I have two patients who participated in this trial. Unfortunately, both of them had some progression of symptoms while in the trial, though I don't know if they received the drug or placebo. So overall, I'm super excited about this. Finally, we'll have something new, something different. Of course, it may not actually be that effective. We'll have to look at the full publication, but it could be an option for people who aren't doing well, maybe on other medications like B-cell depleters or Mazen, or if they're not really a candidate for these medications due to the risk of side effects, I'd be interested to know your thoughts and if you're eager and willing to take this drug if it becomes FDA approved and available. And let me know if you have ideas for other videos.